Hi, I'm Kathy Cook. Welcome. In today's Iyengar yoga class, we will be unpacking the actions in Uttita Trikonasana. Let's get started. Okay, so now standing in the middle of your mat, you're going to spread your legs. We're not jumping or walking this time, just walking. You're going to use the front edge of the mat to get your alignment. So we use props for many different reasons. So here, you're using the front edge of the mat to get that foundation, the alignment. So I'm bringing my right foot, and I have the arch of the right foot on the inside, on the floor, halfway on the mat. Okay, so the other leg, you're externally rotating and bring the foot so it's half on and half off, okay? So here, I straighten both legs, pressing down. You can see the alignment is from the heel to the arch of the back leg, okay? So strong connection with the back leg, back leg lifting, slightly rotating, pelvis is turning, keep the lift on the outer hip, and then start to reach forward. As you reach forward, I'm just gonna have a block here, so we'll show with the block today. So here, I'm gonna place my hand on the block. As I come forward, keep lengthening, keep extending, pressing the foot down, and then bring the hand onto the block. With that bottom hand, turn and rotate that left shoulder. Okay, so here, just feel where the feet are. Move the front thigh back, rotating the thigh. Turn the chest, press down with that bottom hand. Again, you can have several different heights. So use the height that you need. If when you come down, your knee starts to bend, then take the higher height, all right? So sometimes with the load of the body will cause this knee to bend. So if you're not ready for that, just take the hand on the higher block, turn the chest, back shoulder blades moving into the body toward the front chest, reach the arm up. Keep lifting through the inner back thigh, Stay on the outer back foot. Observe the front foot, pressing down into the front foot. Drive the, the kneecap up and the femur bone up into the hip socket. Turn the chest. Staying for a few breaths, looking up. But before you look up, just make sure the head is lengthening. So the back of the neck is not shortening. And then as the chest opens, then turn and look up. So I'm looking with my left eye up toward my right hand. And then press into the feet, lift up, come up. We'll do the other side. So you can take your block with you. If you have two blocks, you can already have one block on the other side. Just line the heel up. Have the front foot half on, half off. So you're getting that alignment again. Straighten both legs. Tailbone is moving down. Lift up to the chest. Elbows moving towards one another so that the shoulders are dropping. Shoulder blades are moving down. And then reach up that right arm. So creating that extension, lengthening over that leg. As you lengthen over that leg, pressing into the foot, drawing the kneecap up, drawing the femur bone into the hip socket. Place your hand. Again, take the higher height if the knee starts to bend. Press down. And if you've shortened on that side trunk, just get that length again so you're moving the armpit toward the foot. And then move the thigh back, lift the inner back thigh, turn the chest. So just looking forward, lengthen the back of the head. So if your chest is not fully open and you turn to look up, you're gonna get some compression here. So lengthening, opening the chest, collarbones wide, Strong in the legs, inhale. Lift up, connect with that bottom hand, reach up to the fingertips, and turn and look up at the hand. Keep the kneecaps lifting up. Keep the right back buttock moving forward and left thigh moving back. Inhale, come up, turn your feet. And then walk your feet together. You've got that block, so you don't want to fall on that block. Okay. 
Okay, so getting ready with a strap and a block. All right, so you'll take the feet apart, walk the feet apart. We'll go to the left side first. So have that block. You're going to take the strap and bring it under your right foot. Have the strap open fully. This is a two and a half foot strap. So if you only have, um, if you have shorter straps, you can put two together to make one longer strap. So make it as long as you can, and then you'll step in. So you're, you'll have this strap on the top of the thigh. All right, so in the direction of Uttita Trikonasana and Uttita Parjvakonasana and the stand, other standing poses, this femur bone is externally rotating and the femur bone is moving up into the hip socket. So there's a strong connection into the hip as well as to the back leg from the back of the foot, from the front foot drawing up. So they're both connecting into the pelvis. Here, this strap is gonna help you to get that action and that experience and that drawing back. So when you're bending here, you're bending from the hip socket and the front groin is going in deeper. Okay, so this strap here at the thigh and with the other foot extended back will help you to get more depth, whereas maybe you wouldn't have gotten that before. So adjust your strap to the length that you can maintain, straighten the leg, and then you'll bring your hand onto the block. Again, if the knee is bending or if you have any problems in the ankle, you can always take a block under the ball of the foot. So I had an injury a while back on the knee and on the ankle. So sometimes it's good to have that lift, have the toes drawing back. It also helps you to get that connection of pressing down through the ball of the foot and drawing the femur bone into the hip socket. So staying grounded through both legs, bring the hand onto the block, taking the height you need. So pressing that back foot back, feel the, the hip moving into the crease. And again, keep, you can take your back hand onto your hip, feel that lower buttock, just around where that strap is on the front leg, and press that buttock forward. Use that press to open the chest. Keep extending through the legs, lifting up through the thighs. Kneecaps are lifted, backs of the knees are open. Connecting with the pelvis, turn the chest, lengthening the head, and then reach the arm up. Staying for a few breaths. So feeling that strap on the front leg, see the action that's happening as that thigh moves back, the depth comes in the front growing, and how you're activating the back leg to help get that extension. Bring your hand down. Now coming out of this, you want to walk that back foot in a little bit, and then turn the front foot, bend the knees, release the strap, and then come out of that strap. All right, so come out carefully. Just making sure that you don't fall down. Okay, so now let's do it on the other side. Having your props go to the other side. Again, now this leg may be different, so just adjusting that strap where you can get the most use out of it. So if you come down into that, externally rotating the thigh. So just coming into a bent leg position. So you get the action of your Tita Trikonasana. Thigh is rolling, rolling so much that the buttock is turning under, that bottom sitting bone lengthening toward the back heel. And then press, press into the foot. So here again, I'm gonna press into the ball of the foot taking that back leg back, taking the strap, and adjusting the strap so that I have a straight leg. I can feel that depth coming in the front growing, straightening both legs, 
and then lengthening over that leg. So there's a little slack in this now. So I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter so the thigh is moving back. That sitting bone is moving toward that back heel. Extend, lengthen. Take your hand on the block. Open through the chest. Collarbones wide. Now bring your right buttock forward. Move your left thigh back. So rotating from the inner to the outer. Turn the top hip bone. Turn the chest. And reach the arm up. Reaching up, shoulder blades moving down. Press that bottom hand into the block. Bring that shoulder blade into the body. So directly behind this bottom hand. Draw the shoulder back, shoulder blade in. Reach up with the arm. Looking forward, lengthening the neck. Walking that back foot back so you're on the outer edge of the back foot, lifting up through the arch. Inhale, lengthen. So the extension is from the tailbone right up through the crown of the head. From the bottom hand up through the fingertips. Breathe. Feel the strap on the top of the thigh, the direction of the top of the thigh. As you inject the femur bone into the hip socket, connecting with the back leg, pressing down, but also connecting the back leg up into the hip. And then inhale, exhale, bring your hand down. Come up. Just adjust the strap. Coming out. And then bring your feet together. All right, in this variation, we'll be using a block at the wall. So you can bring the block down onto the flatter level. Take your feet wide. Well, before you do that, just bring your foot up onto the wall. Okay, I want you to do that so that we can get that action of drawing the femur bone up into the hip socket a little bit better. And then walk your other foot back. So we just use the strap. So you remember that strap moving that thigh back, pressing from the front foot, drawing up through the kneecap, and moving the femur into the hip socket. Taking the back foot back, so you want a nice wide stride. And then here, to get that lengthening through the side trunk. So before you come down, you'll lengthen, extend, stay lifted in the back leg. And then you can bring your hand down onto your shin. Press the hand down and turn the chest. If you have a block, you can bring your hand onto the block there. Press the shin down, but don't allow the back of the knee to fall. So the calf is lifting up while you press down, turn the chest, and then bring the arm up. So using the foot at the wall, pressing through the mounds, pressing through the heel, drive that femur bone up, connect, and open through the pelvis, turning the inner thigh of the back leg, open through the right side of the pelvis. And then bring your hand down, Bring your hand to the wall. Carefully take your foot away. And we'll turn to do the other side. So first, establishing your distance. Have the heel at the wall. Walk your foot back. You can go toe heel. So making sure you're pressing with the mounds of the big toes, the little toe side, all the way through. Pressing the heel down. Lifting up through the legs and then extend up and reach over. Take your fingertips to the wall and there, remember that belt that we had at the top of the thigh. So creating more space in the front groin, lengthening and deepening. And then keeping that length, bring your hand down onto your shin. If you need more space, walk the back foot back a little bit more. Turn the chest. So both feet are pressing down and both legs at the same time are lifting up. Turn the back hip. Turn the inner back thigh. Connect with the bottom hand. Lift that calf up as you press the, the kind of the webbing of that bottom hand. Press down and connect the upper arm into the shoulder. 
turn and look up. Keeping that buttock moving forward as you move your thigh back. And then bring your hand down, come up, bend the front knee, walk the back foot in, and then bring the foot off the block. Okay. Okay, so get your chair ready. We'll use the chair for this Utita Trikadasana. So you'll bring your feet wide, three and a half, four feet apart. Have your block in case you need it. We're going to be using the chair, but in case you need some extra support, have that block handy. So I'm bringing the chair behind me. This chair is going to give me information on my back body. So the back body needs to be opening and turning to open through the chest. All right, so externally rotating on that front leg, remembering what we did with the foot up on the wall, straightening the leg, creating space through the front groin. And now you can see the chair is right against my shoulder blade. So the shoulder blades are moving down and forward toward my chest to open. So from the center, I'm widening, collarbones are widening. You can bring the hand down onto the chair. So depending on your height and how far you can go down, back hand onto that chair rail. Just make sure that the chair is pressing to the back of the left side. Press and turn. Okay, so staying in the feet, drawing up through the legs. All those actions that we were doing in the last poses, deepening through the front groin, lengthening through the side trunk, drawing that left shoulder back, lengthening the back of the head. And then let's just keep our arm on that chair. So keep our collarbones wide. And then turn the head again. Inhale, come up. Pivot on the foot. And then we'll turn. I'm going to show a different side view so you can see from the front. Again, the chair rail is against the middle back. So doing the other side, you can just do turn to do the other side. All right, so now just Observe this buttock. So this buttock, when you're pressing the front foot, you're getting that external rotation, and this buttock is coming in. So it's not moving back toward the chair. Buttock is coming in, back thigh is moving back. So all the same actions that we have from Uchita Trikonasana, drawing up from the foot on the floor into that femur bone, connecting with the back heel, and then we'll come down. So just have that chair where it's gonna to touch your middle back, and lengthen down. Hand, bring your hand onto your hip, lengthening, extending. Extend the back of the head, collarbones wide, chest wide, draw that left shoulder back. You can take your hand back onto that chair rail just to get a little bit more exaggerated turn of that upper chest. And then if you'd like, press the bottom hand down, roll that Right shoulder back and extend up through the left. Looking up. So feeling the chair at the back shoulder blade, move the shoulder blade down. And then we'll come down, exhale, bring the hand onto the hip, bend the front knee, turn the feet and walk the feet together. Come back and face forward. Okay, one more visit into the actions of Utita Trikonasta. So this time we will go asymmetrically. So you stand in the center of your mat and bring your back heel, your right leg, your right heel back onto the back of your edge of your mat and then externally rotating the front leg. Walk it as far forward as you can getting that length through the legs to the inner edge of the mat. If you can't go all the way to the inner edge, then just stop wherever you can. Okay, straighten the legs. 
So here, this gives you that action of externally rotating the leg because you're already turning the leg, so it's being forced to turn. The buttock then rolls under, which helps to get the final pose of Uttita Trikonasana. So this left buttock is moving under, the lower back is lengthening, femur bone is drawing up into the hip socket, extending. Go ahead and take your height on the higher block, or you can lower it if you want. Press the hand down, straighten the leg, turn the chest, and just feel that external rotation on the top of the left thigh. Move the buttock forward. Find your sitting bone on that front thigh, and as if you could lengthen it all the way to your back right heel. Lengthen, remembering that belt you had on the front of the thigh. So you deepen that crease, bring your arm up, turn and look up. Take a few breaths there, experience what you feel. So now turn the foot, carefully come out, walk your feet in, and then we'll do the other side. So take your block to the other side now. Bring your left heel to the back of the mat. So the toes are pointing forward. You're walking the front foot forward. So you're already getting that external rotation by placing your foot in that way. So this alignment helps you to get that turn, buttocks rolling under, and the length. And then just making sure your block is somewhere where you can reach it. Lengthening, extending, deepening, cutting that buttock under, moving the right buttock bone toward the left heel. Press down, lengthen that side trunk, bring your arm up, reach up. Bring that shoulder blade into the body, turn the chest. Stay in the feet, lifting up through the legs, keeping that connection. Breathe. So feeling that experience of that thigh and that rotation that you're getting with this alignment. Practice with that. Coming up, turn the foot and walk the feet in. Okay? Thanks for showing up. If you've learned something today, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell, which will notify you of the next video. If you like this format and would like to see more poses unpacked, then leave your comments in the section below. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll be sure to get back to you. See you in class.